Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit of the range of motion you get with the model. Um, so starting from the bottom and working up, uh, on the legs you don't get any uh, range of motion built in, which is, to be honest, probably a really good idea, um, because when, with any sort of bipedal model, um, one of the biggest stress points in the model is going to be any joints in the legs. So if a model has an independent foot, an independent knee, an independent hip, there's always going to be stress in the, in the model there, and it's, always, it's going to be very prone to breaking off there. Um, the privateers done something really smart, is they made the major load-bearing portion of the, the lower body um, out of metal, which is a really good call, and they also made a double-action joint. First of all, um, there's a, the whole, the joint is basically this ring on the leg here um, that holds together the... Uh, that the, the holds a, a smaller peg on the other side, and that's also what's a double peg. So basically, the, the ring holds that little uh, square in place, and then the square stops the whole thing from rotating. So basically what this amounts to is that the legs will essentially just lock into place, uh, and that will make the model very, very solid. Now, the model as a whole isn't very heavy, because most of it is made of this, uh, this resin, and this resin weighs like nothing. It's, I can throw it around. Of course, I knock the camera when I do that, but there's, like it weighs absolutely nothing. Um, uh, yeah, so, but, you know, just in, as a general rule, like, you, you wouldn't want this thing to be f flimsy at a major structural point like that, so, um, that's that. If you did want to change the pose of this, like, if you wanted to say, I, I don't know, if you wanted them to be jogging or something like that, um, then in that case, you, uh, it would be fairly simple to do. You would just take a pair of clippers and cut off the square peg, and that would let you still use the round, uh, the thing there, and then, uh, and it would just kind of like rotate around the around the peg, but I'm not going to do that because I want this thing to just be solid. And to be honest, I don't want to do all the work to make this thing run. Moving up from the legs, um, the next the next piece with some range of motion to it um, is the waist. Um, now the waist immediately struck me as having two um, axes of uh, of articulation, uh, but in actuality, there's probably only one. Um, the reason, so here's here's basically the way the joint works on on, on the the waist. Um, <clears throat> there are the main one is this piece uh, that basically it has a peg and it slots into here, and the torso sits on it. But it's a it's a round joint and you can basically turn it. Uh, well, you can turn it 360 degrees around. It goes all the way, um, and that uh, basically lets you add a twist to the torso, right? Uh, in addition to that, the fact that the, the, the saddle joint that the way the torso sits on top of the waist here um, feels like it should have some rotation to it, and it does to an extent. Um, taken entirely on its own, you could articulate that part. Uh, and even like, you know, you can see there's a, like a circle here that, you know, it looks like there's a, you know, a pin, whatever. The complication with doing that if you wanted to to tip it forward is that it makes all of the um, the pipes at the waist kind of impossible to put in. Um, these ones in particular. Uh, so there's the small ones on the side and as long as this thing is straight up they're very very easy to put in. The, the small peg goes in here that goes in there and then boom you have your thing. You do one, you do two, you do three, you do four. Whereas, if you do any kind of tip on this whatsoever, all of a sudden these things don't work anymore. The, the, they're, they're perfectly sized to go, when this thing is straight up and down. Um, and there's even, like you can see, there's, if, I don't know if you can see that, but it's at a slight angle. Uh, and they are sized to accommodate that. But if you, yeah, if you tip it, it they, they don't work. Um, now, even... There's a similar complication, even if you do any kind of articulation left to right, then the one in the front has the same problem. Um, because while these ones go from the bottom of the waist to the top of the waist, so they're not affected at all, as long as, long as you keep it upright, the ones on the side will always, uh, will always link up. Whereas this one goes from the upper torso, it skips the, 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 the bottom circle, circular you know, pipe thing entirely, and they go down to the crotch. So the problem is, if you tip this left, if you go, if you put it on straight, first of all, um, this piece, 
for the most part, this peat, this kit fits together beautifully. This is the one piece that I did not feel fits together very well. It basically just kind of sits here. Um, this piece kind of goes in here. It, lo it looks like a, almost like a ball and socket joint, except there's no back to it. So it kind of like goes in and it wants to slide, um, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but there's also no grip on this side. In fact, from what I can tell from looking at the, uh, the illustration and the... Um, the instruction diagram and everything, this literally just goes up in there and then this this rounded part just sits up against that rounded part and they just kind of do that, well, in the other direction, but that's all the, the piece is supposed to be. So it's not the greatest fit to begin with. It would be fine if the thing is locked dead forward, but if you turn it to any amount, then at that point, I mean, if you turn it a little bit, it will still link up, but it looks a little awkward. As you can see, like, basically then you've got uh, essentially, like if you look just down here, it starts to kind of twist against it, and so it just it looks a little strange. Um, and if you twist it a lot, like if you gave it a really big twist so that he's like I don't know, looking far to his side, it, it actually won't even stretch anymore. Like it'll start there, and then basically it uh, it won't meet. So, if you're going to twist left and right, um, it, it it's totally doable, just that what I would recommend in that case is if, if you're not twisting very much, you can just take this thing, turn it, maybe mount it with some putty at that point to make sure everything kind of holds in place, but that's not, that's fine. You could probably go up to about that much turn in either direction, okay? If you want to go any further than that, my recommendation is that you take this piece, snip and snip, and then repin it to whatever length you need. Uh, probably lengthening it. Um, and then, yeah, just make it a little bit longer so that it will fit. And it'll go from here, it'll twist in, and it'll go into the other piece. And that's basically all the all the adjustment you would need to uh, make this thing turn left and right. Um, if you don't want to have to worry about that, then I, w I would personally keep the, uh, the rotation left to right, you know, fairly under control. But it, it is doable if you want to put a little bit extra work in it. So moving up from there, um, the next uh, piece of articulation is all the bits and pieces that uh, sit on top of the torso. Um, so the big guns, which is literally what the gun is called, um, they slide quite nicely uh, into this channel. There's a, a line right here which goes into the channel. It goes here and you can have your big guns aiming low. Uh, basically if it's going to sit, if that's you know upright, then it's going to sit like this. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can have it shooting upward, you can shoot downward, you can do whatever you like with these. The metal storm guns um, have a ball and socket joint. They sit in here, uh, and you can turn those. They actually will point straight down if you really want them to. Uh, otherwise, you can point them in different directions. Again, you can do pretty much whatever you like with these, and they will accommodate. The head is just a peg joint. You can sit left and right. My recommendation always with any model that has a separate head, my recommendation is to always make that the dead last part you attach to the model. Um, because the, the positioning of the rest of the model will kind of determine the pose and it, it, it'll, it'll give you hints about where the character should be looking. Whereas if you stick the head on too soon, you often end up with a body that's you know, a body that suggests the head should be looking one way, and then all of a sudden the head is very awkwardly looking in a different direction. So always, at the very, very last thing you put on, figure out kind of which way, you know, based on the way you've assembled the rest of the model, then put the head on and turn it a few different ways and see what looks the best. Because you may find it looks best looking to the side, looking forward. Um, the peg, uh, it's not the, great, it's not the greatest for this, but it would allow a little bit of up and down movement if you wanted it to. I, again, I would suggest some putty if you wanted to do that. Um, but for the most part, it just does this left and right motion. And yeah, just do that as the last thing that you do. The last major point of articulation, uh, and by far the one with the most options provided, are these absolutely incredible ball and socket joints in the arms. Um, the one at the shoulder itself it has the most freedom in it. Uh, you can see that there's basically, it's set up so that there's this small inner um, ball that goes into here and then it lets you 
twist this however you like. But the really clever thing about what they've done here is that they've sized the socket not necessarily to this, but they've actually sized it to this larger piece here. Which means that you actually, instead of only having the rotation that you would have for the small ball, which would be like that, you actually have the full rotation of the entire ball segment. Now I've seen another unboxing video where someone mentioned that um, they had some issues getting this to stay in and they ended up pinning it. I can see maybe where you might have an issue with that because since it is a step, um, you're likely to only have, like if you see, like if, you know, basically you'd have something like that on the inside and it would only have like a small contact point and a small contact point. So you may have some issues getting the two pieces to grip each other. Personally, I solve issues like that either with uh, a wad of putty inside and then I jam this in and it just kind of forms a seat for me. Um, or, I mean, I'm really lazy and sloppy. I will just slather a whole bunch of glue in there, jam it in, and wait. Uh, it'll take a long time to dry, but it will eventually, again, form a seat. Um, so that's that's how I would solve that. But, yeah, no, it's just it's really awesome how much movement you get from this. And even better than that is the fact that not only is the shoulder a ball and socket joint, the elbow is as well. And that is absolutely on this model. Um, it gives you just an absolutely unbelievable amount of, of uh, pose options in both of the arms. Um, you can do, you know, rearing back so that you've got this strong, you know, getting ready to, to punch or, um, you know, charging up or whatever. You can have him, uh, you know, pointing an arm forward. Um, you can actually see that it actually does matter which way you face this because if you put it on this side, you can only get, you can get mostly down, but you can't actually get it pointing straight, but if you wanted that arm pointing straight, basically there's the, this side has a little recess where the two pistons are, and then basically that piece here fits into that recess, and you can have the arm pointing perfectly straight. So, yeah, just the posability options are unbelievable. You can have doing this, you can have it going down, and then this one goes up a little bit. I mean, some of the poses obviously look a little stupid, but you you ultimately can do a lot of really neat stuff with this. You're not just stuck with, you know, a static arms hanging at the side pose. You can do some really, really cool stuff. Um, and in addition, um, you can see I've actually I've pinned this together, and I'll just point out now, I've pinned this purely because I'm doing this demonstration. When you're just building the model, you absolutely do not need to pin these pieces together. Um, they weigh almost nothing. There's no weight to s th th that requires this pin. That's usually what, what you pin for is so that you have uh, support for extra weight. There's, these things weigh nothing. I've, I've just done that because it, it makes it a little easier for me to, uh, to, to show this to you. But yeah, basically this part as well, um, it lets you turn because the, there's a there's a peg that goes into a socket on this, and there's a peg that goes into a socket on the hand, um, and then between those you can turn things in a whole bunch of different directions. You can have the hand pointing. You you can have the hand facing downward. You can have the hand upward. You can twist the hand within that. You you can you have all kinds of freedom with here. So between all of these different joints in the arm, you can do a lot of different things with it, and you're not. It's not just a matter of you know your you know, your storm wall is going to look exactly like everyone else's. No, because this is such a centerpiece model, they give you a lot of freedom to um, to personalize it and to give it the, the, your own pose and really give it the whatever personality that you'd want. And I think that's a really, really awesome move on their part.